Good morning. I brought my backpack with me. I know that we all have backpacks, but I wonder if you've ever worn your backpack on a hike. Worn it for a really long time. At first it doesn't seem too heavy, but then eventually it feels quite heavy. And we are quite glad to put it down. You know, it's the same thing with sin. If we don't admit our sin, if we don't confess it, it begins to feel very heavy. But when we do confess it to God and turn away from it, we feel so much lighter. And in our story today, which is called Joseph's Brothers Return to Egypt, we are going to see how Joseph tests his brothers to see whether or not they have turned away from their sin in the past. Now you remember in our last story, we learned about the Pharaoh and how he had had two dreams and he couldn't find anyone to tell them what he meant, what they meant, except for Joseph. And with God's help, Joseph told Pharaoh what his dreams meant. What they meant was that there was going to be seven years of plenty in Egypt. Every crop they planted, they got more than they planted. It was, every crop was full and healthy. And during that time, they stored a fifth of it up in all of the storehouses in Egypt. And they kept records of how much was being stored. But, you know, pretty soon, there was so much grain, they couldn't keep track. And so they just had to pile it up in huge piles. There was that much grain. But after those seven years, just as Joseph had said, there were seven years of famine, where every crop that they planted withered and it died. There was no rain. And when the food ran out, they came to Joseph, and Joseph sold the people of Egypt food. But the famine was more widespread than just Egypt. It was in other countries as well. As well. And so they had to come to Joseph and buy grain. And that's what they did. And remember Jacob's sons, Joseph's brothers, they came and bought grain too. But you know now, that grain had run out, and they needed to go back. And Jacob said, you have got to go back and buy more grain. And Judah reminded him, he said, remember what we told you? We told you that that ruler said he would not let Simeon out of prison. We would not see his face and we could not buy grain again unless we brought back Benjamin, our youngest brother. Jacob said, why did you tell him that you had a younger brother? And Judah said, well, he questioned us closely. He asked if our father was still alive and if we had a younger brother. So what were we supposed to say? How did we know he was going to say we had to bring him back? Jacob said, I cannot send Benjamin back. He said, listen, remember Jacob had 12 sons. He said, Joseph, I've already lost a wild animal. Simeon is in prison and now you're going to take Benjamin away from me? Remember Joseph and Benjamin were the sons of Rachel, his favorite wife. He said, I just cannot let Benjamin go back. And Judah said, we have to, or we're going to starve to death. In fact, if we hadn't wasted all this time, we could have gone there and back twice. So Jacob finally relented. And he said, all right, if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. And if I lose Benjamin too, well, I lose him. But he said, this is what you're to do. You're to pack up your sacks with choice fruits from Canaan. So put in things like grapes and figs, mangoes, coconuts, pomegranates. Take all these fresh choice fruits down there. On top of that, take a special present for that ruler. He said, take some balm. Balm is like a beautiful a lotion. Take some sweet smelling resin. From resin, you could get um, perfume. You could make spices. Take some pistachios, some almonds, some honey, some gum. Now that's not like chewing gum. That kind of gum is like um, glue. Things would stick together with that kind of gum because of course back then they didn't have glue like we have today. Then said Jacob, take back double the money. He said you need to take back all the money that was returned in your sacks the first time. They had no idea what happened there. And also take extra money for new grain. And of course he had to send Benjamin with them. Now when they set out, they are going from Hebron down here to Egypt. Doesn't look very far on the map, but it's actually 400 kilometers. And they're traveling with donkeys that have got all kinds of sacks on them. So that would take them about 10 days to get all the way down to Egypt. Now, when they got there, Joseph heard they were there. They, he heard that they'd come back and that they had their brother Benjamin with them. 
And so he said to his steward, I want you to get everything ready and um, set up my house, my palace, because I'm going to eat with them at noon. Now when the brothers heard that they were going to Joseph's house, his palace, for the noon meal, they were frightened. I mean, they let their imaginations go wild. They said, oh boy, he is going to pretend that whoever put that money in our sacks, he's going to pretend that we stole it, and then he's going to take our donkeys and he's going to make us slaves. I mean, they were just imagining all kinds of terrible things. And so they all went to the steward at the door. They went up to the door and they said, listen, you know, we were in Egypt the first time and we bought grain and somebody put the money back in our sacks. But we want you to know that we've returned all the money. We've brought it all back. Plus, we've also got a bag of new money for new grain. We, we don't know what happened that first time. You know, the steward said, don't worry. He said, I received your money. And then he brought Simeon out of prison and he brought the brothers water so that they could get ready for the noon meal and he gave their donkey something to eat and then the brothers got their present ready and when Joseph came in they all bowed down to Joseph and Joseph remembered his dream again that dream where his stock was standing up and everybody else's was bowing down to him it was coming true again now Joseph looked at his brothers and he looked up and he saw Benjamin and he said, is this your youngest brother, Benjamin? And they said, yes. And Joseph said, God be gracious to you, my son. And then his heart became so warm with compassion that he had to run out. Joseph ran out of the room. He was looking for a place where he could just go and weep for a moment or two. He hadn't seen Benjamin for a number of years, about 15 years. And so he had a little weep in this room and then he washed his face and he went back and controlling himself, he ordered the servants to serve the food. Now, they were instructed to sit down in a particular order and when they did, they looked at each other in amazement because they had been seated in order from oldest to youngest. I mean, how did anybody know that? Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, all the way down. Now, Egyptians don't eat with Hebrews. They just didn't do that. So Joseph's table would have been up here, and his servants would have brought the food down for everybody. And, you know, everybody had plenty to eat, but Joseph made sure that Benjamin was served five times as much. Five times. You know, the Bible tells us that they had a great meal. They were happy. They were all talking. It was such a good time. Things were looking so much better. You know, Joseph showed kindness to his brothers, even though they had sinned against him in the past. And in a much bigger way, God shows us kindness too. He offers us forgiveness through Jesus. Now, when it was time for the men to go, Joseph gave orders to his steward and he said, I want you to fill up their sacks with as much grain as they'll hold. Also return their money. And in the youngest brother's sack, I want you to put right at the top, my silver cup, my silver cup. You know, everybody who was a leader, a nobility in Egypt had a silver cup and this was Joseph's personal one that he drank from. It had great value. So the steward did as Joseph requested. And then when the men were just a little ways out of the city, Joseph said, now I want you to chase after them. And when you catch up with them, this is what I want you to say. Why have you returned my master's kindness by stealing his silver cup? So the steward did. And when he caught up to them and said that, the brothers said, what are you talking about? We didn't steal anything. Like, why would you say that? I mean, didn't we just show you that we brought back the money that somebody put in our sacks by mistake last time? I mean, why would we steal anything from your master? And the steward asked them to open up every sack. So starting with Reuben, who was the oldest, he opened his sack. Everybody opened their sack. Not only was the money there, but in the top of Benjamin's sack was that silver cup. And you know, the brothers, they did not know what to do. They were so alarmed and frightened. The Bible says they tore their clothes. Now what was gonna happen? And they said, um, they just didn't know what to say. And the steward said, this person, Benjamin, has got to come back with me to be the slave of my master. 
but they wouldn't let Benjamin go back by himself. They all loaded up their donkeys and went back. And Joseph was still in the palace. And when they came, when he, they got there, they just threw themselves down in front of Joseph. And they said, how can we explain this to you? How can we prove that we're innocent? None of us stole this cup. I mean, God is punishing us. I mean, we will all be your slaves. And Joseph said, no. Only the person in whose sack the cup was found will be my slave. The rest of you can go home in peace to your father. But Judah spoke up and he said, I know that you are as powerful as the Pharaoh, but please listen. Our father sent us down here with Benjamin, but his life is bound up with this boy. If we don't return with Benjamin, our father will die of a broken heart. Now, you know, all of these challenges and hardships and things that happened to Jacob's family were God's way of changing the hearts of those brothers. And next week we'll find out what happens. So see you next time.